decaying process of the body, maybe just purely physical. And suppose you know the karmic connection of this illness, how would you to take the burden of that karma instead of letting him to learn his own lesson, which he needs? Also, don't take people's chance or opportunity to be more aware of God's presence and to be more aware of the need of God's grace, to be more aware of the need of seeking spiritual power and eternal healing power instead of relying on a quick magic touch, all right? That's even more cruel than to let him suffer physically. He will be reborn again if he die. The physical body is not that important if we don't use it in the right way. So God sends illness or misfortune to remind us to use, make use of the physical body in a better way. Okay? So the best way probably if you want to help him, if you, you think it's better in a spiritual way, is to talk to him about karma. Tell him to change his way of life instead of killing him. But it happens too. When you are in the presence of a, a spiritual master, a powerful master. Healing takes place without the master doing anything. It happened many times. But I don't like to mention these things because first it sounds cheap and <laughs> I'm proud, you understand? And people come and ask me if I have healing power, I usually say no. But it happens, all right? If that person is receptive enough, it heals instantly all kind of disease. But if he should suffer, it would be best for him. Then it doesn't take place, the healing, or it takes place slowly. All right? First of all, I want to thank you. I really got a lot of what you were saying all day today. Um, there's one thing I'm really confused about lately, and that's, uh, well, I'm 19, and um, I live in the United States, and uh, I have, like, cross feelings on whether I, if there was a draft or anything, um, whether I would go over and fight. Um, one way I look at it is, you know, that we live in the land of illusions and uh, we're not these bodies. I could go on that trip and then, and then I could just, you know, feel good about that. But there's, there's other times where, where me, me and, you know, a few other guys would think uh, that there is a, another country being, you know, um, besieged and, and there's people being raped and murdered and, and hurt and stuff. And how we could just stand by and watch that happen. Um, I feel really torn on that issue. Mm. You know, I was wondering maybe if you could have an opinion on that. Yes. <laughs> yes, your question is the question of many uh, loving people, concerning people, considerate people. But there's no cure if people don't cure themselves. You know the law of karma. You see, suppose you become a hero. You stop the murderer and protect the virtuous woman. But how can you do it in the whole world? You understand? And sometimes the so-called virtuous women are not that virtuous. And the one who murder or rape, for example, excuse me, huh? Uh, the rapists are not the only 
responsible person in the case, the whole society, the whole world, the whole trend of our time is responsible. Yeah? So what to do? You can put that person in jail, but another person will spring up. We cannot change the world if people don't like to change, but we must try. Therefore, your master goes out <laughs> risking his old age comfort <laughs> and sacrificing his reputation <laughs> and his time and energy to tell people to change themselves. And therefore, your monks, brother and sister, go out Continue the intention of your master, of the master Prabhupada. For example, yeah, there are many other groups in the world are doing this kind of noble work. So why don't you join them? Light one more torch, empower more the group, yeah. Instead of sit there and feeling sorry, do something, okay? Maybe you can save ten, and the other save twenty, and he save thirty. I always save the world, okay? <laughs> Do it quickly. There's no other way to change it. <laughs> There's no other way we can help people. Just go out and tell them not to do it. Go out and tell the whole society they have to change into a better pattern of life. Yeah? Not to change the victim alone, <laughs> change the whole society. It's difficult, but it's not impossible. At least, if we could not stop the whole misery, we stop some part of it, all right? It's already a great accomplishment, don't you think? Hmm. You're making me feel proud. I was aware <laughs> huh? of all this compliment. I just hope my ego won't puff up tomorrow and I couldn't get through that door. <laughs> <laughs> you're going. It's been such an ecstatic experience to be with you. I hope we see you at the interfaith oh, yeah. service tonight. You know what? Forgot to to distribute this in case you people are going. If someone who doesn't have the red envelope, this is a symbol of of, of love and luck for a Chinese of Vietnamese New Year. It's, it's still New Year today. Tet, yes. Anyone else? Okay. Yes. Ah. Yes. Distribute. Yeah, you distribute behind there, please. There you are, brother. Tet, Tet is now. Tet, yes. It's uh, begin. It begins January. two days ago. Oh. Yes, two days. Ago. To the year of the goat. The goat? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you put in here? Money. Oh, is it offered to you? No, <laughs> you. It's for you. <laughs> One dollar. <laughs> Just symbol of, symbol of richness. My disciples, my so-called disciples, prepare it. They prepare them for everyone. Really? Yes. Because in New Year's, I supposed to give them something. Traditionally, yeah. I'm supposed to give you something. Oh, uh, no need. I don't need anything. But, but we need to give. <laughs> yes, you give a lot, <laughs> without knowing. You give your support, your love, your smile, and. Yes, 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 your agreement. That's very encouraging for me, better than money. Mr. Ching, I have a rather simple question, but it's one that's been bothering me for quite a long time. Are we, as people, bad people getting good or trying to get good, or are we sick people trying to get well? Do you understand that? Who are we? (laughs) 
No, I don't quite get you. I mean, I mean all people. That are are we responsible for evil, and is is evil caused because of a kind of uh, psychological illness, or is it caused because of a of there being a inherent badness in us? Yeah, you see, we are not even responsible. But we can say we have not been careful enough in directing our free will into the a better channel. Yeah? God is not responsible either. <laughs> he creates things for us to enjoy, but we are attached to these things. And from attachment, Mm, grows war and hatred and competition, jealousy, okay? <laughs> we were not careful enough, that's all. And when you met someone so enlightened, they tell you to be more careful in the future. Enjoy things if you need them. Bring your enjoyment to the minimum and try to enjoy what's more everlasting inside, yeah? Then you start to realize that what you have done before is not really conducive to your life and your spiritual awareness. So we change, yeah? yeah. Hmm. Is, it, is it not also true, though, that uh, this, to gain this detachment that you're talking about requires discipline? And that actually it's been said that that love, the, the idea of love, unconditional love, is the, the very nature of it requires a great deal of dif discipline. And this is why it's so difficult to attain love. I'm t speaking of real love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Is that true? It's yes and not. It depends on your karma. If you had already developed love in many lives, yeah? And this life you might not need. Okay? So in that case, it looks like you don't need to go through suffering <laughs> or much discipline to attain love, yeah? But other person who has not completed his training in discipline and love, he must do it so in this life, yeah? For example, some people have to go through suffering to understand compassion, but Buddha did not have to. And Jesus did not. You know what I mean? He just be... Um, he probably inflict suffering upon himself, but he did not have to go through by force. Okay? And Jesus did not go through suffering to realize his love. You understand? He, he has to be nailed on the cross, is what at the end after he already realized the love within himself, because he already has developed that quality within the other lives, or maybe he was a divine personality. You know what I mean? So it's not necessary that suffering means compassion. <laughs> okay? Depends. If you have been always loving all your life, then when you you reach a, an enlightened master, you don't need to go through suffering anymore. You're born with uh, compassion or love, yeah? Capito? Satisfy? And before I go, I'd like to op offer you something. First, I wanted to, to uh, ask you if you like music and if it inspires you, to, you know, inspires your spiritual life. I like many things. <laughs> I like oh, many what things. I would like to do is just sing to you this little verse. Oh, to express, sing, please. To express uh, my inspiration, your inspiration. Sing, please, and spoil me. Dear friend, dear friend, let me tell you how I feel. You have given me your treasure. I love you so. Thank you. Many, many Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Yes, that's how they get me into trouble, by printing these kind of things. <laughs> and calling me living Buddha and that and what not. If they just call me a living master, it would be better, but they call me a living Buddha, that makes trouble. Because <laughs> people don't know the difference, the difference between Buddha and a master. Yeah? Because <laughs> they believe there's only one Buddha. You know, or the last one was Sikamoni and no more. Until five, ten thousand years later, until we all went to hell, and then another Buddha will come. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They don't believe it that there is Buddha who comes all the time when people need. And we always have spiritual need in every age. Why should Buddha make a distinction between our age and that age? Okay. Sometimes it's difficult for us to believe we deserve. Deserve, oh yeah? If that is the only thing then it's not so difficult. Why don't we deserve it? I think if we knew the answer to that, we wouldn't have the problem. <laughs> if we don't deserve, well, at least maybe the Buddha <laughs> deserve it. <laughs> the Buddha deserve the privilege to help us whatever condition we are in. Because Buddha cannot make a distinction between the sin and the sinless. For Buddha, there must be no sin. All right? <laughs> Why are you so pessimistic? We are God. We are living God, whether we realize it or not. If somebody has treasure hidden somewhere in his house, you understand, from his parents, whether he knows it or not, he had it all the same. <laughs> it's just he cannot use it, that's all, okay? He's a millionaire, like every other. If he cannot use it, it's only harmful for him. It doesn't mean he's bad in any sense, all right? On the light and the sound, yeah? and let it lift you out of the body consciousness and be gone, <laughs> be blissful and be aware of things. But if you can't see light, you can't hear sound. And continue until you see and hear. Or ask your Master Grace for help. Ask your Living Master for grace, yeah? Or ask for proper guidance. Maybe you don't do it correctly. Or maybe you don't concentrate enough. Try to concentrate more, yeah? <laughs> Concentrate doesn't mean only when you meditate. You have to be focused at all time, be ready for meditation. Chant the mantra all the time until when you sit down, you're ready, okay? That's why you need to chant the mantra all the time, just to get ready for the departure. <laughs> but you have to change with focus, attention, as much as possible, okay? Okay. Let's put it this way. If you try and couldn't give up chess, then at least meditate with it, all right? Do both. And then it will run away itself. Do both. You can play chess or write book about chess, but meditate more, okay? And then you find some more interesting things inside and more pleasure within. And then it's easier to live off the less interesting thing, when you have a more interesting thing, okay? But if you play chess more and meditate less, then of course you cannot find any pleasure in spiritual field and more pleasure in a material exercise. And it's harder to live when you don't have any pleasure from here and you have some pleasure from there. Of course you cling to that. It's, it's easy to understand. So meditate more by all means. Whether you leave chess or not leave chess, meditate, make yourself, yeah, <laughs> discipline.
That concludes our presentation of Supreme Master Ching Hai and the Hare Krishnas in Virginia, USA on February 17, 1991. It is a great delight to have you join us today on Words of Wisdom. Please tune in again tomorrow for Supreme Master Ching Hai's lecture, Kuan Yin Method is the Method of Loving Power. Up next is Cinema Scene. Please stay tuned.